Hello and welcome back to our Movie Picks tutorial, the second in our series we're calling DVD Architect Studio Basic Training. I'm Steve Grizzetti, your host and co-founder of MoviePicks.com. And let's continue with our series here. Now, as we last left off, we created a pretty basic menu page here with a couple of buttons, a sub-menu, and we've, uh, we've customized our text just a little bit. But uh, we're only part way through. We haven't got a very exciting menu right now. How do you customize your menu? And you can customize your menu page in a variety of ways, either within the program or by customizing it using your own media. The easiest way to customize a menu page is to go down here to the lower left and select themes. This will customize your entire menu page in one move. So for instance, I can look at this beach scene, double click on that, or drag it right up into the workspace area, and now my video is set up with a beach theme. You see that the beach theme not only added a background, to my video, it also added little frames for my thumbnails. Uh, again, I could uh, double click on any one of these and it will automatically change it to the theme that usually includes a font change for all of the text, it includes frames around the buttons, it includes a background. Now, once I've got that, of course, there's no rule that says I have to keep this particular theme as is. I can customize the theme also. So if I go over here to the buttons tab, I can select any button frame I want. So if I select this video button right here, and if I double click on this, now suddenly I have a new frame for it based on uh, this frame here. And, and you can see there are several, many, many frames. So you can have many button themes going at once. And more advanced, if you're much more advanced, of course, you, you don't even have to use these buttons or these frames. Um, you can create your own custom frames. It's not that hard to do if you know how to work with a program like Photoshop to create a transparent ping. You can create your own frame. Or if you're like me and you don't particularly like frames, you just come back here to this menu and remove the frame. And now you'll get just a plain old square thumbnail. Okay, so now we have our thumbnails and we have a theme here. We also can change the background and come back here. The, most of these backgrounds are from uh, the various themes, but of course you can mix and match and you can drag whatever background you want in there and create a custom look for your DVD background. So again, you can, com you can mix and match any button, any background, or you can apply a theme and have it all done at once. Uh, you can, in addition though, you can add your own background. Now this background that you add for your menu does not have to be a still photo. And you can do that if it's a still photo by going to Explorer and browsing to a still photo and dragging it in. If I were to drag though, for instance, an MPEG or, or some other kind of media, some kind of motion media in there, uh, it's going to, the, the program is going to say, no, that's not a background. It's going to add another button here. So what if I want to make this an animated background as my background? This is very cool. If I click on the background here, you see that my properties now says menu page properties. I can select background media, which right now is just set, set as uh, background JPEG. Click on that. And now I can browse. If I select replace, I can browse to my files and I can choose whatever background I want. Now this is an MOV file, it's a QuickTime file, um, but it's also uh, something that the program can use. And if I apply it to my background, you see that not only do we get an interesting background here, but it's animated. And if I were to collect my click, I'm sorry, and if I click on my preview button up here, I can see, there it is, animated, moving in the background. So you can use your own media. This happens to be a motion background with a, I think it's a 30 second loop on it. You can um, add your own media. You can have it continuously loop. You can have it run for a long time. It's going to add size to your DVD if you do. But you can customize it in any way that you want. So there we go. This is a, a really cool thing that you can customize your buttons any way you want and you can customize your background. Now our buttons, as we said before, are set up for either the first frame of your video, that's what makes your thumbnail, or you can create a custom frame. And as you remember the way we did that, you selected a button here, and we went to the button properties, and clicked on the media page, and we used our start time to set where this button, what this button shows. 
Now, if I want to make that into uh, an, a loop, for instance, I can select Animated. Now, my button is going to show some motion. And if I click over here to preview, you will see that in addition to the background moving, my button also moves. Very cool, huh? All right, so now we have our DVD. We have our menu page background. Again, you'd have to customize each menu page yourself. Uh, or apply a theme to it. Again, you can just do that simply by selecting a theme and dragging your theme onto it. And kaboom, just like that, your video has a theme. Um, none of the themes here are animated and none of these backgrounds are animated. However, you can, again, choose an animated background. You can get some from the Sony site or you can get them from moviepix.com or you can use your own motion background, whatever you'd like to do. And that takes us to the end of our second phase here in using DVD Architect Studio. Um, and the basic moves again, we have created a background, we have created um, some custom looks for our DVD menu and for our buttons. And in our next, in the final step here, in basic training three, we're going to take a look at how then to turn all of this into a DVD. And I'll show you how to do that in part three of basic training DVD Architect Studio. I'm Steve Rossetti. Thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you in the next part of our series.